Tonight, we will be examining or inspecting this O200. It is a Continental and has been sitting for quite a while, since 2007. And I don't even know what year it is, I don't know how many hours are on it, but we're gonna look into it because we need to determine if this thing is usable as is or we need to completely rebuild it. So this O200 is obviously a four cylinder because you can count one, two, three, four. And uh, it's an air-cooled aircraft engine, similar to those found on like a Cessna 150. I don't know what this came off of, and it came to us as a, as a, a kit that a gentleman was gonna use, and unfortunately, he, uh, he ended his time on Earth beforehand. And we are fortunate enough to get a hold of it. Um, we have from firewall engine forward, so it's complete. It's got the starter, it's got the mags, it's got a generator, uh, everything is on it as it was removed and we're going to learn what's good and what's bad from sitting. It sat for a long time, maybe it had moisture in the garage, maybe it was dry as a bone, maybe they had a bunch of decusant bags around it, you know, preventing it from getting corroded. But we're going to do a bore scope inspection in the cylinders, we're going to possibly pull a jug off, take a look at the cams lifters, everything you need to determine if this is safe to use as is, or if it needs to be completely taken apart. You know, this engine may have had an incident not in the logbooks. It might have had a prop strike. It might have, uh, it might have been in a flood. I mean, we really don't know. The logbooks state what maintenance has been done in the past, but it doesn't state the current condition of it. And that's our job to figure out what's going on. And, you know, maybe the kids will pick up a thing or two. So tonight, you guys are going to dig in the logbooks and you're going to find out pertinent information like what year it is, what model it is, what was it installed on, how, how long have the mags been on there. I want a full report. So it's twofold. It's in the books right here, researching, reading, understanding, and it's also physically, you know, what type of corrosion is on the inside of the engine. We can do a bore scope. Uh, on each cylinder. We can take a cylinder off and, and look around and inspect things like the cam and lifters. In fact, this is going to be really exciting. It's a 25 hour inspection and determined to be in a quality, in a quality condition. Yeah, okay. This is, yeah, very, very exciting. April 1966. That's a long, that's actually quite interesting. This is mostly just certified that it's been inspected. Well, I don't know what, the, I can't read this. I'm just trying to figure out when it was. These, these are different AD notes that they complied with. And that, that's it, you know what an AD note is? It's, it's like a recall on a car. Yeah. You know, it's the, the, when they, I guess they did a. They're not in order though. Well, but this is a major overhaul. Yeah. And then, then these were all the ADs that they complied with during the overhaul. Oh, wait, so these are not dates. It, it is the date of the, of the AD note. Fine. Can you certify that this is an engine? <laughs> um, Holding it actually, I think it's a compressor. Oh. Definitely. Well, yeah. Actually, technically, it is. Well, I mean, <laughs> Sorry, how am I supposed to? Compresses at it's just, one point. It's a very inefficient, like, overbuilt compressor. It's very strong. Yeah, just, oh, I don't even need this right now. I'm just gonna set this right here for, for a sec. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, it's, it moved. Jesse, this is for the yeah. trailer, right? This, these are for this O2. Yes. yes, yes those okay. those logbooks, and that you can you can identify that with the oh, serial. Oh, with the serial, plate. yeah. Okay. So it says it's pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's turning. It's turning through. Yeah, I get it. Oh, it feels good. Feel? It feels good. Turn it this way and see if the, if the impulse is clear. Am I turning it the wrong way? Well, yeah. Okay. Yes. I was turning it the wrong way. Yeah, see, uh -huh. the impulse is clear. That's good. So the impulse couplings are on the magneto, right? Yeah, yes. and, and they that way you can uh, see that and there's, there's two of them. You, you can hear one time one of them click, but the other, rest of them on the two of them click. Here you go, Weston. What do I need to do? You're gonna you're gonna insert it into the spark plug and examine the cylinder. That's the top of the piston. Yeah. 
And, that, and that's the white stuff is just probably, you know, lead build up. And what we want to do is look at the cylinder walls and, they, and they, they look like they're chrome. See the... Oh yeah, look at the, in, the channels fact, right there. And in fact, it has orange here. See, that's... An indication. It, but it, it, see how the cylinder wall looks like a dry lake bed? It got those little cracks up. That, that's a chrome finish, which is good because that means it won't rust. Oh, yeah. There's a little bit of scoring right there. Well, it, it looks pretty good. Then go all the way down into the cylinder, and then I'm going to turn the head around. Yeah, that's the exhaust valve right there. Oh, okay. and, and that's good. It's a good burn pattern. See how it's concentric. Yeah. And you know, it's, it hadn't got a, a, you know, like a green place on one side where it's been burning. There's yeah. both the intake. Look real good. And the, the intake's bigger than the exhaust. This is that. All right, so that's cylinder number number three. What are you doing now? We want to determine if what the runout is of the crank flange, because maybe this motor was subject to a clock strike. I don't know. Accessory case pieces. Uh, you know, we need to look. I can look for them and see if I, I have them. Yeah, there's you know, something's a lot, missing. A lot of gear, you know, stuff in there. So it's, it's off of the stop. And then I'll put the zero. Yeah, that's good. And then let's see if we can. There's a bumper. This needs to be tight. Yeah, it's a nice little setup. So you say, and see how it goes forward and back. That, that checks the, the end plug. What, what you can do is kind of, we can get something like a screwdriver and push on it. Oh, yes, he is. I'm like, how faded this receipt is. Almost just not. I thought I was looking at the back of the receipt. <laughs> That's the front. There, you can't even read it. Oh, no, you can. A little bit. Barely. Look at this. Barely. All I know is that he shopped at Advance Auto. <laughs> it's like less than half. It's less than half. No, I was buying plane parts at Advance Auto. Yeah, it's allowed to be like seven or something. Seven? I thought it was supposed to be like two, no greater than two. Well, I don't know, but it is uh, seven. You think that's. Working? I think we looked it up and it was like two. Yeah, that's, that was really good. So our runout's good. Three of the cylinders look good. The fourth one is maybe and, good. And it's okay. I just poured a little bit of oil in it, and yeah. it to, you know, to keep it oily. But the rest of them look, look good. I'd... How do we know what shape the cam is in? Like, well, you can see the valve's going up and down. Yeah, but is, do, can we figure out if it's rusty or not? Like the lobes and the lifters? Yeah. It, it's almost better not to disturb stuff. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you if you were worried about the cam, you could take a valve cover off and just see you know see how much it's going up and down. Yeah. You know, you could measure the lift. On I wonder what I wonder what they do look like under the valve covers. We should pull valve cover. What is the bag. index bag? It is uh, it's the name of the manufacturer of the magneto. So we did. That's time to pull the valve cover off. So I think they were maintained up to a certain point. It doesn't look bad. Mm -mm. We can um, see if we can turn it over. And, I mean, if you, there, there's a spec, you know, you could you could put the dial indicator, you know, here and, and see, you know, see how much it goes up and down. And, there's a spec on that. Yeah, it'd be the lift on the cam. So it'd be equal to the lift, the amount of lift the lobe provides. Yeah. yeah now, now this end would be the cam, but see, this is amplified. And it's a little bit longer. Right. So, so your arm so is longer yeah, on the so pivot. It'd be a little more travel up there. Huh. And that uh, you can um, tell how they're, they're running. See, this is the this is the exhaust port here, so it, it's a it's it, it's a four stroke engine. You all know about that, but like so the let's watch it here. See the 
the, the intake is, is opening that the, the valves kind of overlap. See that right when they change like that, it's, it's like top center on the on the non-compression stroke. So right now the, the intake valve will open. You see there, it, so therefore the piston's going down and this valve's opening, so it, it's sucking air in. Mm -hmm. See, it'll, it'll suck it all the way in, and now, now the, the the piston's all the way down. The so back, that's you know, that's the valve point. Closing. So now the piston, you know, put your screwdriver in there, you'll feel it coming up. Six bolt clamps have to hop in that proper fit. See it? Mm -hmm. It's coming up. You can feel the air coming out yeah. of it. So that's the compression stroke. So then, then it comes up here, here's the little timing marks here, so that you'll, you'll adjust it. Like on these, it's, it's supposed to, I think, 20, 26 degrees before top dead center. So anyway, that, that's what, you know, and the, the impulse is retarded a little bit. That, so when it clicks, it'll be just about top dead center. See, that, that's top dead center. Because you, when you're starting it, you don't want it really advanced. You want it a little bit more retarded. So the impulse holds the mags and then lets it go. And, now top dead center, that's why that's so it'll start easier. And, and now this is the power stroke where they're both closed and it's going back down. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so now check, it's probably about all the way down now. Yeah. And then now, as it comes back up, it'll start it. See, well, yeah, see that, well, then the, well, that was, now it comes back up and the exhaust, see the exhaust was opening. And then, you know, it squirts, squirts the exhaust gas out. And then now it's coming back down and it says it starts all over again with the intake. So you got the intake stroke, you know, compression stroke, power stroke, and the exhaust stroke. There's four, four strokes. Hundreds of times a minute. Yep. It's a little different right there. This is a McCullough. You know This is pretty clean. I mean, there's a little bit of here. It's there, but like it's still mostly not. Wait a minute. It's not like at the same place. That's that. Yeah. No, no, it's a different place. Oh, yeah, that side. Right there. Well, that's not too awful bad. Hey, first time we yeah. started this engine, we should have the cardboard pieces on and like start. <laughs> Let it just fling <laughs> off. Have some like confetti stuff in there. Well, we know it fits. Sweet. All right, so we know it's a uh, it's an early early uh, 0200A, and we know it has approximately 600 hours on it, and three out of the four cylinders are chrome, and they looked beautiful on the uh, bore scope inspection. The one cylinder that's not chrome has a little bit of surface rust on it. And uh, we're, we're not too awful concerned with that. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to check the uh, oil screen, make sure it's clear of contaminants. That's and then the really exciting thing is I think we're going to build a test stand and we're going to run this engine on the ground because this would be a great engine uh, to fire up in the ground, be able to troubleshoot and, and set up mags and, and all kinds of stuff. So this is destined for uh, hangar operations. Only immediately, and who knows? Maybe one day it'll be bolted up to the front of a Cessna 150 again. Um, it's it's on the type certificate for a lot of Cessna 150s. So this this in fact came off the 150, and it'll probably go back on one. We have a lot of a lot of parts coming in for 150s, a lot of fuselages, a lot of wing sets, and uh, we'll end up putting it together one day. But for now, uh, we're gonna we're gonna build an engine test stand and run it on the ground. Yeah. We're going to find a bent up old prop and we're going to cut the tips off and make it to where it, uh, it'll keep it cool. Of course, we're not going to run it that long when we we'll run it, but uh, it'll be it'll be pretty exciting. It'd be nice to switch this one cylinder out that's not chrome with a chrome cylinder. That way they all match. And I think we've got enough uh, cylinders around. We can do an inspection on one and you know, put it in service on this. So this was a good find. I'm happy it found us. Yeah. 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 Ye
I guess we put these sparkle wires back on too. I was about to ask about that. <laughs> So the 